Hey boys and girls, anybody feeling lucky today? As you can see, that is the theme for this month since St. Patrick's Day is in March. Um, but today also I started with this page because we're going to be looking at our calendar for the first time this month. Although I know it's just the second day of March, but that's okay. Um, so before we do, I want to introduce you to a function machine because we're going to be talking about some functions today. And it kind of reminds me of the song, Conjunction Junction, What's Your Function? You guys may know nothing about that because that's from way back in the day, but I guess I'm just showing my age. So today with our calendar grid, we have some functions going on. And so I want to introduce you to the function machine and we're going to do a practice run through trying to read a function table before we actually look at what ours is for this month. So it says, hi, I am a function machine. I can transform numbers in all sorts of ways, depending on how I've been programmed. Once I've been given a program, I keep doing the same thing to any number you put in. So remember I said we're going to be doing some pattern stuff this month? Well, here it is. And we have two examples of some things that this function machine has done. And we're going to see if we can figure out what the pattern is. What was it programmed to do um, so that we can figure out these empty boxes right here? Well, let's look at the first one for the first job. And I just want to remind you again that this machine is programmed and whatever it's programmed to do, it's going to keep doing it over and over and over again. Okay, so it's not going to do it once and then it's going to change the second time. It's going to remain the same always. So if you put in a one, out comes a three. If you put in a two, out comes a four. What are you thinking? What could this machine be programmed to do? You think adding two, so one plus two is three, two plus two is four. Let's just continue to make sure that it continues to follow that rule, because if it doesn't, that means that's not what it was programmed for. Three plus two is five, four plus two is six, five plus two is seven. So then what number would go in this box if it is plus two? And it is indeed plus two, because all of these so far have followed the same rule. 25 plus two, good, 27. And so then if we're at 145 over here, how would I get the N number? Got to do the inverse operation. So now on, instead of adding 2 to get 145, I need to subtract 2 to figure out what did I actually start with, which would be the number 143. Awesome job. So. If I were to label the program, which means the pattern, basically, what are we doing every single time? Good, we are adding two. And I also want to write that as, a, um, as an expression. So I'm going to write it like this. I have my in number, I add two, and I'm going to get my out number. You get it? Good. So if I want to be really fancy and use an algebraic expression, which means I'm just using letters to stand for numbers. Um, so we call those variable. And I could also write this in plus two. So a number plus two. That is the program for this first job. We all in agree agreement? Great. Let's look at job number two. Hmm. Start with one, in one, out two. In two, out four. In three, out six. What is that job? What is that program? You think you know? Okay, so then if you think you know, what should we get here? Four to eight, five to ten. Did you say twenty? I hope you said twenty. So what's the job? What's the program? Good, we're multiplying by two. So then how do we figure out the n number? What's the inverse operation of multiplication? 
division. So instead of starting at a number and getting 124, we need to start with 124 and divide by 2. So we need to figure out half of 124. If you're struggling to figure out half of 124, let's figure out what's half of 120. That might be easy. Good, 60. And half of 4 is 2. So 60 plus 2 is 62. And if I were to go forward, 62 times 2 is 124. So let me write an expression for this one also. I would do in times 2. And that's going to give me my out. But I want to be really fancy. And I'm going to do in times 2 for my algebraic um, for my algebraic expression. We good? Okay, so let's look at our calendar for this month. Here it is. Let's look at our first marker. And let me move my beautiful face. So look, we have one is going in, and then out is four. What do we think? Yeah, maybe we're just adding three. Or maybe we're multiplying by four. Hmm. Let's fill that in on our observation chart. So we started with one, and out came four. What do we think? Right, it added three. Do we think that's going to happen every single time? Because remember, these function machines are programmed to do something, and then they keep doing the same thing. We think so, right? Or it could be multiplying four, so maybe I'll put that or multiplied by four, maybe. Let's look at the next marker to see, because that'll help us narrow down our thinking. So here's today, March 2nd. <gasps> Yikes. You put a 2 in, you get 7 out. Is that adding 3? No. Is it multiplying by 4? No. What is it doing? Yeah, so now it's adding 5. So we have 2 in, out 7, and now it's adding um, 5. Which makes me kind of feel like, you. I don't know what's going on here. Now, um, let's just go ahead and look at tomorrow's calendar marker because maybe then we can refine our thinking and figure out what the pattern actually is or what the program is. We're looking ahead today. We put in a 3. We get out a 10. What in the world? Yeah, so this time it's adding 7. Doesn't seem to be following a pattern, right? At least not one that we can think about right yet. So, when we are looking at this this month, we are going to be uh, trying to revise our thinking, okay, based on the new information that we're given by looking at each calendar marker. So maybe we'll come to a conclusion and then we'll have to test it when we look at the next day's calendar marker. So the goal here is we're looking for patterns. We're, we're not going to be able to guess it right away, obviously not with the first three because they're adding something different each time. But we're going to keep making observations so that we can develop some new theories about the pattern as the month goes along. So every day we'll update our calendar and we will add our observations to our chart here. And then at some point we will make some predictions about what we think is actually really happening here. Okay? We good? All right, I can't wait to find out because I don't, I didn't look ahead, guys. I like to be surprised when I look at these things in terms of what the pattern is for the month or the program is. So I did not look ahead. 
but we need to do one more thing before we finish our video for today and I will say yesterday I told you if you were in person you should have these pieces cut out so if you didn't have an opportunity to do that yesterday maybe you have an opportunity to do that today because it needs to be done by the time we get to um, be gluing them in our notebook okay so just a reminder go ahead and get your pieces and get them cut out if you are at home and you don't have this in your toolkit from things that maybe you've picked up from school then maybe you can cut out some strips of paper and do some folding because um, I know you've done folding fractions early on this year as well so maybe you still have those if not we'll make it work don't worry um, let's go ahead and spin for what we're collecting today remember the first one is for you the second one is for me so here we go Ooh, this time we got one sixth so I'm gonna add one sixth to your column and let's see what Miss Tremel is gonna get don't tell me one six. Oh, you know what guys it's on the line I'm gonna have to spin again because it's right on the line and I can't choose I don't I want to be fair so I'm gonna spin again <sighs> that stinks this time I got 112 so I'm actually kind of glad that I got 112 because I wanted to talk to you about comparing fractions and we couldn't do that yesterday because we both had um, one third so now I have you guys have a six and I have one twelfth. how do those um, fractions compare good one six is bigger so who is um, closer to filling up their hole as of today yeah you guys are right so what else can I say about one twelfth and one sixth? How much for how much am I behind? Maybe I should put the question that way. Yeah, I am one twelfth behind you guys because look, remember we talked about equivalent fractions. One sixth is equivalent to two twelfths. Well, maybe I didn't line up my pieces exactly like I should have, but they are equivalent. One six and two twelfths take up the same amount of space or the same distance on a number line. So I'm only one twelfth behind you guys. So that means I could potentially catch up fairly quickly. We will continue to update our calendar collector. We will continue to look at and figure out what the pattern is for this month. And I will see you again tomorrow for another brand new activity which I'll tell you, it's not really brand new because we've done a lot of them before, but the information may be brand new. So you guys have a great afternoon. See you tomorrow.